Right, blah 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 is a doozy. It's a middleweight slasher that's very unique in just about everything. Like other slashers, it has arc shots. But instead of the usual paint projectiles or variants of paint projectiles, it's extra bubbles. You can do all kinds of um, things with it. You can also do like these horizontal uh, horizontal arc shots and gonna bounce around. You can do wild tricks with them. There's some nice lessons to do it with, like here. This one right there. We use it as a sometimes. Now I do not wanna play now. <laughs> but yeah, it's a really fun weapon with a lot of fun tech. But it's not so fun as trying to paint flapper zones with this. I mean, it, it doesn't look so bad when I'm showing it here, but it actually is like really not great. It's slow and it leaves empty spaces and stuff. If you have to solo paint that and have a full ink tank, what you can do is throw a bomb on one side and then paint the other side of it, and that should usually get the zone. Something like that. And of course, also while paint is. Look at this. This is like. Uh, definitely the biggest weakness of this. <laughs> Yeah, what it does really well though is kill things. It's two shots Kohax. That's 240 damage per shot. Almost the two shot 500 HP versus, versus even, but you do need third shot there for some massive overkill. No, that, that's still fine. There might be some champs getting the way or something. It's like a single one of them, then you're gonna knock that out too with the three shots, and it's fine. As you see, it takes only two of the buffs to knock out a charm. Like that was better there, like I did the horizontal flick again, and you hit it, and two bubbles passed it. Actually, like that you see as well. Speaking of horizontal flick, that is how you handle small fries and quantities of small lessers anyway. Like exactly like this. As many of them as possible, kill of as many of them as possible. Yeah, that usually works nicely. And for Koax, you just turn two direct shots. Since you know it's two shots, you can also, like, you don't need to watch them die or anything. One, two, then hit the next thing with the next shot. Like, Steelhead is interesting. This weapon is decently good at killing steelheads. It does need it does need to get close. Like, yes, officially this has long range, but you see, shots are falling down too fast, so you cannot hit it from here. Get close. Then you can do like fall off shots as well. Like while it's readying readying up the bomb, you can fire above it. And once it's out, you can fire directly at it. That's how you get the fastest steelhead kills. This also works really nicely on Drizzlers. I can also tell you the amount of shots that are needed to kill every boss. 500 HP, we've said 3 shots. Drizzler would be... If not far, it's exactly 4 shots. No, not exactly, but it's 4 shots. A big shot is exactly 5 shots. Right on the dot, 1200. And then the scrapper shield, just like the body, it's also three shots. No difference. You are dealing this 100 extra damage with the overkill. So there. And stingers. Stingers are a little bit wonky. You are one shotting pots with the bubbles, exactly. However, that mod would mean that you would theoretically always kill a stinger in two shots, and that is unfortunately not how it works in. Re in games. Like you basically just need to get a feel for it, actually like look at them and you get a feel for what will be the last shot and stuff and that is when you can turn away and do something else. It's not gonna be the second shot and especially if you have if you are really far away it might also not be the third shot. However if you can manage to get close you could try to do something like this. 
vertical flicks. But looking at it here right now, it doesn't seem like it would work. But you want to experiment with it. Right there. Right, then that may still fit. I'm usually just shooting it far away. That's just more convenient. Something for saints here. Oh yeah, then also about the stinger matchup specifically. The spawning ground stuck stingers, they are in a little bit of an annoying position. They're just sitting just behind the grated wells there. Like, let's say I'm looking at the stinger like this, except it's on the right side instead of on the left. The dummy is the stinger and... What you need to watch out there is to not hit the wall by accident, it's like a pretty tight angle, depending on how you look at it. Why they, why exactly they did that, I really don't know, but fingers are sitting like half behind that wall, the ground stocks. That's annoying. For the blood. Would be a really good matchup, but it has to aim correctly because of that. Anything about. I have fish sticks. You can hit fish sticks from the ground at slight elevation with this, I believe. And definitely with slight elevation. Like as usual, stand on, stand on the right side. Like hit him against the movement direction, you're gonna catch multiple. That usually be better than climbing them, but if you do climb them, then again, horizontal flicks can do some nice works. Or as long as there are still a lot of them at least. The only few of them you wanna just try to actually Okay. I forget here. I don't know I think that's all. Right, let's there's something Oh no right, I forgot moss, moss, right? Something that you can do with moss when a little bit low ink, which can happen with this because you're spamming shots a lot and not the most ink weapon ever. Good mass. Especially if you have a high damage comp, your second comp. Maybe teammates may join you and then you can one cycle it right there. If not, and you keep on doing it, then you can two cycle it yourself, so using less ink but use with a bomb. Possibly also doing other things like right before or right after that. And again, if you do have ink, then um, of course, an option that you have. That is something that really high damage per second opens for you. Alright, now that is other buses. Now about night waves. First up for Rush, this is one of the most flexible weapons that exists in Rush. It can, it can, do, the it can do the Goldie kills close to basket with its DPS. It can also do some really sick filtering, especially on normal tide. It can like reach re really far with its bluffs and beat chumps really early. So basically, many many overfishing records on normal tight rush they have blah blah in them. You can see the blah blah are ten tabrella above in the rush records usually. But where it's a little bit less good is on high tide because there's not so much range to cover so. There are other weapons that can do filtering of the same quality, but on Amletite it's very notable. Then, then, so, so there is a little bit to say about Gorillas. Then Gorillas is possible with this, of course, but it's really hard. Like, you need to predict the movement and then do, like, side slushes again, possibly, to actually hit multiple bubbles. Roughly like this here. Okay, this is the grill, except it moves even faster. You're aiming higher and stuff. That is how you can stun them if you have to. But yeah, it's really hard. Don't worry about it if you fail. Once it's stunned, of course. A really good DPS weapon, and that is what you would ideally do with this. Would be expected. However, if. For whatever reason, we happen to have a weapon composition that is really weak to small fries. Then actually do not do that and instead fit a small fries with horizontal flicks. 
You might not catch all of them, but you will still catch many of them and it will be such a great service to the team, trust me. If you wanna know more about that, I can actually show you a way where I'm doing that. Like, not in this episode or anything. But on two, I've had exactly that case in the overfishing session. Got a really nice clip there. Yeah, that is the blob lover. <laughs> 